Hey everyone, welcome to Think Woodworks. My name is Izzy Swan, and today I want to show you how I make wooden handles out of 120 year old red oak for my Palette Pal. I had a company contact me recently about wanting a number of Palette Pals, and um, they talked about metal, and I really wanted to stick with wood. I like using wood as a material, although I think metal is a really good option for something like this. Um, I found 120 year old red oak. Uh, the only problem that I that I had with it is it came in big sizes. It's two inches by uh, anywhere from 18 on up to two feet. The gentleman had oh just over 3,000 board feet, and he wouldn't part with just a small amount of it. He wanted it was an all or nothing situation. So I, as you can see, here's a couple slabs of it. I bought the whole lot, and uh, whew, it was pricey, but it's worth it. You know, 120 years old, uh, when it was milled and then used in an old building, you can see some of the marks here where it was in the, you know, set on the joists. And uh, it's absolutely, once it's milled down, it's absolutely beautiful material. And I'm turning out a bunch of handles. Right now, I, today I'm turning out about 50 handles. And um, to do that quickly, I needed to set up some kind of system to do it. And, you know, some of you who've been around for a while have seen, seen me use my table saw to do lathe work. To wood turning. And this is actually a real simple setup, and I'm going to do this in one take. So um, I'm just going to turn one leg out, show you how it works, show you how I attach it, turn one handle out, and um, let you guys get back on about your day. So anyway, this is the jig right here in front of you. And I just have a drill attached to a 3 8 bolt that goes through two shoulder bearings here on this side. And I have a jam nut here and a jam nut on this side. And on this side, I've used a T-nut with a little tangs, and I've kind of turned the tangs in, so when I thread it on there, it grabs a hold real good. And on the other side, same situation, hard to see, but I just have a 3 8 bolt coming through two bearings, and it's jammed nut on there, and then I, I uh, sanded the bolt down itself so the bolt has a smooth shank. Now on my blanks, I've drilled a, a 5 16 hole, and a 3 8 bolt threads into a 5 16 hole real nicely. It grabs a nice and tight a hold of that, and that holds it in there quite nicely. So to mount this thing, I just turn the drill on in the forward, pos in, you know, in the forward position, and that holds it on. As you can see, that, that thing is just sitting there in midair. It's just floating there. It, that holds it right, really quite nicely. And on the other side, I've built a sled of sorts. This is a just a removable sled, so I can do different uh, depths. And I've got a little um, 5 16 bolt that goes in, and actually, once I have it in position, I tighten those two bolts down on either side and hold it quite nicely. So, uh, I just slide that into the, the hole on the other side there and tighten everything down. And in my uh, table saw, I've got a dado blade set up in there. You can do it with just a regular blade, but because I want to do this all in one pass, I'm hogging out a lot of material. Um, I put my dado blade in. And what I've got, the way I have it set up is the dado blade, the left side of the dado blade is center of this piece. And the reason why I don't center it over the top of the dado blade is because I want the, all the teeth from that actual looks like a saw blade and that does a better job of doing the finish work or you know makes it less sanding I have to do. Um, if I leave it in the center those big jawed teeth in the center only take out so much and they leave what looks like little grooves in it. So now that that's all locked into place I'm going to go ahead and run this through in real time so you guys can see the whole process from start to finish and how long it takes. And I think you'll be impressed.
Now with the major majority of that material hogged out, I'm just grabbing a 100, 100 grit pieces of the disc sandpaper and giving it a light sanding. And that's really all I do, um, minus a little bit of mill work towards the end of the, the job, the finish here, I'll just uh, do a whole bunch of handles that way, and then after I do the final sanding in 120, I'll put an outdoor finish on it. It's a little secret recipe I use that makes an absolutely amazing, durable finish. So that's a real quick way to turn on a bunch of oak handles on your table saw. get this thing reset here so I can talk to you guys for a second so that's it I just wanted to do that in one quick take you know I start with uh, 120 year old uh, reclaimed oak cut it down into blanks like this drill holes on either end turn them out and then give it a final sanding and I end up with a really nice product that I'm very happy with so I'll be posting more about this in the next couple of days. Um, I'm actually, because I had to buy so much oak, I'm going to make them available on my website and in the in the video I do about it. I'll make those available also in the video uh, just because I have a lot of oak now. And um, so they'll, they'll be available. I got a lot of fun stuff going on this week. It's been one of those really crazy weeks. I haven't gotten any videos up since last Friday. But I've been working on what I think is one of the coolest pieces of equipment I've ever designed and built. And um, this is the floating router, pantograph, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, we're, I'm making some changes to it and doing some things that are just, they're really cool. And I can't wait to show you guys, but I want to make sure I'm, I get it right before I do. So I'm working on that. Um, we've got some other really cool builds coming up. So don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned. Tomorrow I'll get the other video posted where I wanted to show you guys a couple other really cool little ways to build jigs and how you can use jigs in a multifunctional purpose, like, you know, use a single jig to do several tasks when you're doing production work. So I'll do that, that video tomorrow. I'll show you what the finished palette pal is going to look like. And uh, we got lots of great stuff coming up. Thanks for watching. I hope everybody's having a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.